Day 202 of the Trump administration wraps up with the president still in New Jersey. The response from North Korea to the president's fire and fury language of yesterday. And the news today of what's being reported as a pre-dawn raid on the home of Paul Manafort in Alexandria, Virginia, late last month. Sources tell NBC News the FBI raid and the subsequent search were tied to his business dealings and financial relationships, both in the U.S. and around the world. The Washington Post was the first to report the raid, writing, quote, federal agents appeared at Paul Manafort's home without advance warning in the pre-dawn hours of July 26, the day after he met voluntarily with the staff for the Senate Intelligence Committee. It continues, the search warrant indicates investigators may have argued to a federal judge they had reason to believe Manafort could not be trusted to turn over all records in response to a grand jury subpoena. A spokesman for Paul Manafort says, quote, FBI agents executed a search warrant at one of Mr. Manafort's residences. Mr. Manafort has consistently cooperated with law enforcement and other serious inquiries and did so on this occasion as well. Just a reminder, we also now have a better idea of the sheer amount of evidence the Congressional committees have already collected, specifically the Senate Judiciary Committee. The chairman's office says the Trump campaign has turned over about 20,000 pages worth of documents. Manafort himself, about 400 pages, and Donald Trump Jr., about 250 pages of documents. And going back into our archives, as Manafort's name was mentioned in stories about this Russia investigation more and more often, here's what the White House said about the man who ran the Trump campaign campaign as its chairman. He was replaced long before the election. You know that, right? He was replaced long before the election. When all of this stuff started coming out, it came out during the election. But Paul Manafort, who's a good man also, by the way, Paul Manafort was replaced long before the election took place. He was only there for a short period of time. Obviously, there's been this discussion of, of Paul Manafort, who played a very limited role for a very limited amount of time. Paul was hired to oversee the campaign's delegate operation. In total, he was involved in the campaign for a total of just under five months. Which brings us to our leadoff panel on a Wednesday night. NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Hallie Jackson has agreed to stay up late with us. <laughs> Former federal prosecutor and MSNBC analyst Paul Butler with us again. And politics editor for The Daily Beast, Sam Stein, who is also an MSNBC analyst. Welcome to you all. Uh, so, Hallie, granted he was only with the campaign a short period of time. What's been the reaction today and tonight to the Trump camp to this story of the raid? Yeah, listen, I think that you're seeing, uh, obviously, the outside legal teams handling a lot of these Russia questions. And I'll say this. I think that that montage you played of Donald Trump and Sean Spicer talking about Paul Manafort is some revisionist history. We were all there. We covered it. We lived through it. Paul Manafort did not play a limited role for a limited period of time. He played a significant role for a good chunk of critical time when Donald Trump got the Republican nomination. And now, obviously, you're seeing this latest move, uh, or, or what we're learning about now, that happened based on our sources on July 26th. This first reported by the Washington Post, this raid at his house. Frankly, a significant development here. I'll tell you this. In my conversations with people close to Paul Manafort over the last month or so, maybe a couple weeks or so, there's a lot of discussion about cooperating fully. They are cooperating. You hear it publicly, actually, I'll say that, as well as privately. Uh, to be frank here, there's not much of an option, because if he wasn't cooperating fully, there would be potentially even bigger issues with some of these conversations that are being had now with the congressional investigators, because remember, that's operating on a parallel track to the special counsel investigation uh, and the FBI uh, raid, as has been reported, too. Uh, and Paul Butler, something Hallie just said leads me uh, to you. I don't know much, but I know this about what we witnessed at Paul at uh, Manafort's home. Uh, number one, federal judges make young federal prosecutors really sing for their supper. They want the justification. They want hard evidence that they're going to grant this search warrant warrant for probable cause, uh, the wording in our Fourth Amendment. And number two, this must have happened because someone thought he still isn't giving us all of what we need, even though he had just been in to talk to them. So federal agents show up at your house in the dead of night, knock loudly on the door and say, get up and get out. We have a warrant to touch everything in your house. Frankly, Brian, in drug cases, police do this all the time to low-income, 
black and brown people. But in a case like this, a white collar case with a rich white guy, it's a gangster move by special counsel Mueller. <laughs> And it's practical in the sense that he's saying he does not trust Paul Manafort to comply with a subpoena in good faith and honestly turn over documents. That's why he has to send the feds in. But it's also expressive. It's designed to send a message to everybody from President Trump one down. You think this is a witch hunt? Well, let me show you what a serious, aggressive mm -hmm. federal investigation looks like. Uh, so, Sam Stein, however the White House tries to play down the role of yeah. Mr. Manafort. <laughs> this is a big move and an indicator that he is a huge person of interest. Well, he was always going to be a huge person of interest precisely because he was a big player on this campaign. Also, he had these uh, contacts in the Ukraine. There was a question of why actually he was tapped for the position of campaign chairman. He hadn't done a campaign in the modern era, really. He was sort of a relic of the Nixon era. Um, it seems to me, just from the outside looking in, that what they think they can do with Manafort is potentially flip him. That he knows what mm. happened on the campaign, that he knows enough about the Trump business empire, uh, that there might be enough there to actually get him to turn on Trump. Whereas maybe other people in that Trump orbit, and Hallie might know this better than I, maybe other people in that Trump orbit aren't as loyal. And remember, Manafort was pushed off the campaign rather unceremoniously. That isn't always the case. That isn't always the case with other Trump associates. So perhaps prosecutors are looking at this saying he's the easiest target for us to, uh, to flip. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.